What's good team and welcome to today's video where we're going to discuss the difference between client and server rendered components in Next.js 14 and likely a lot of other JavaScript frameworks in the near future. We're going to learn about each of them, how to implement them, what the differences are by taking a practical look at a project we built on the channel not too long ago. It's a statically generated blog, which means that everything is server rendered. All of the blog articles are written in Markdown and a whole lot of server rendered pages are sent across and rendered on the screen. If you want to build the project, the link is in the description down below. Equally, you could just follow along and learn the difference. But if you also wanted the code, you can clone the code from the GitHub repo that's also linked in the description down below. Now, this project makes a brilliant example because it's server rendered to make sure that it's very search engine optimized. We have an SEO friendly blog. But what happens if, for example, we wanted to add a search filter to our blog that would have to be a client rendered component where we would have to use the mechanics of React to filter through all of our blog articles. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a search filter to the server rendered blog, and that's going to demonstrate the differences between server and client rendered components. So if we just have a look at the code, it's pretty straightforward. We have a page we get a whole lot of the posts. Here we have a function and its server fetches all of the posts so that we can then display them on the screen. And currently all of this is done on the server. We can see that because if I type console.log hello world, that's going to show up in our server console, not in our browser console. Now the problem is if we wanted to add a search bar, we need to use use state. And if I try to import use state, let's say we create a search filter set search filter for an input and we say is equal to use state like so if we import the use state we get an error now the error says you're importing a component that needs use state it only works in client components but none of its parent components are marked with the use client now one solution would be to take this use client and we can turn a server rendered Next.js component into a client rendered one by throwing it up the very top of our web page, use client just like that. And now when I save the page, we get a different issue. That's because a lot of the posts that we rendered needs server actions. So it essentially breaks our code and it actually also defeats the purpose of a server rendered blog by making everything client rendered. So we need to be a little bit smarter with the way that we implement our blog. So if I want to fetch everything on the server and get access to all of the posts, I can't use use state in here. If I get rid of all of that, we get back a friendly application. It's happy once again. We now have our blog. What I then need to do is come into my components and create a search bar.js component I'm going to use the RFC trick to automatically create that component. And now in here, we don't need any server actions. This doesn't have anything to do with the search engine optimization of our blog. So I can actually import use client up the top and I can also import use state. And that would then allow me to create a state. I could say cons search value set search value is equal to use state and set that to an empty string and if i save that our project is still happy so that's all well and good now at this point i would say if you're getting involved with client components in next.js 14 it's best that you're familiar with the mechanics of react.js i have a tutorial for that linked in the description down below if you want to brush up on that so now i've created my search bar what we could do in here is we could actually have uh, an input so we'll turn this into an input for the minute, it can have a value equal to search value, and we can say self closing on change. We can pass in an arrow function, and that arrow function is going to receive the event. And in here, we're going to set the new search value equal to e.target.value. So this is going to create a fully functional input. I might also just add a placeholder value that says search blog posts, just like that. So that's our client component complete. We denoted it as a client component. Now we can use use state. However, if I come into our page and I just import, uh, let's say that component right here, search bar, like so, we do in fact get the search bar showing up. 
and we can type stuff in it, but I can't actually use it to filter through the post because I need access to that state inside of this component. So what I'll have to do, I still wanna fetch all of this information on the server. I have to get all the posts and server rendered code. So this main homepage needs to stay as a server rendered page. But what I can also do is create a parent component for the view and the search bar. So here I could create a new file and that could be search view.js. I can initialize that using the RFC trick. And what I could do in here is I could return react fragments pretty straightforward and I could have the search bar like so. And then what I could do is actually copy all of this code, which is our post container, paste that directly beneath, make sure we import everything. And now what I could do is have props. I could receive the post metadata from the props and destructure it out from the props like so. And then if I come back to my main component, I can get rid of that, get rid of the search bar, and I can now render out the search view. That can be a self-closing tag. And now what we can do is we can pass in the post metadata as a prop. Now what that allows us to do is we can have our posts all fetched on the server side. So all the posts get fetched on the server side. And now inside of this component right here, what I can do is I can have use client up the top. This can be a client component because now we've already fetched all the posts, we've run our server code, and then I can define my state in here. I can lift this state up from the search bar and instead receive it from the props. So I can say const search value set search value is equal to props. And now I can lift that state up into the search view I can pass it down into the search bar. So I can say search value is equal to search value as props. I can say set search value is equal to set search value as props as well. Now the search bar has access to all of the props. Use state is obviously not defined, so we'll need to define that quickly. I can just import that here, use state. And now, we have access to the search value state, the interactive client side state that will allow a user to interact with our search bar. But we can also now throw in a filter right here. And I can say filter, I can access the value and have a arrow function. And in here I can say val.name. I believe the, uh, if we go to the card, we can see what is actually, we can use the title. So it's the title parameter that we want val.name.includes the search value. So what this is now going to do is it's going to filter out all the post metadata and it's going to only include posts where the title includes the search value. So if I come in here and I type in apple pie, we can see that it filters out all of the rest of them. If I type in banana bread, it filters them all out. If I type in blueberry scones, it does the same. So the moral of the story is what we've done is we have created some server rendered components, anything that needs search engine optimization, or for example, if you're building a statically generated blog like this one, we have kept it as a server component and wherever we need to use React interactivity or any other client side functionalities, we can create sub components and add the use client to the top of that component and that will allow us to interact with the use state. And often we want to create these sub components inside of our server rendered component as a small portion. That way the entire web page, for example, can still by majority be server rendered, which is going to be much faster. And then we can add in client side interacted interactivity and little droplets where we need it. Anyway, I hope this demonstration has helped you to better understand the difference between client side and server rendered components in Next.js 14 and how you can implement them inside of your code base. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.